What is up, Mountain Men and Mountain Mamas? Mountain Man here, bringing you another episode of Hunter 101. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be going over the skill system and the perk system and the points and how all of that works. Uh, if you've played any amount of time in the Hunter Call of the Wild, you'll notice that when you level, you get a point. Um, now, what you get, whether it's a skill point or a perk point, will depend on what level you're at. So, starting at level 2, you're going to get a point every single level. Uh, every even level... 2, 4, 6, 8, etc., you're going to get a skill point. Every odd level, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., you're going to get a perk point, all the way up to level 36. Uh, at that point, you'll have 18 of each. After that, you'll get one every three levels. Starting at 39, you'll get a perk point, 42, skill, etc., alternating all the way up to 60. Ultimately, you'll end up with 22 skill points and 22 perk points. What are skill points and perk points, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, because that's what this episode is about. Basically, your skills and perk points are going to be used to enhance your character. And they're going to be used to enhance different facets of your character, and can be moved around and placed however you wish to affect your specific style of hunting. Now, in order to get to them, you can either hit escape, and then go to skills and perks, or I believe it's F5. Okay, doesn't do it. Let's see, F6, nope. So it's gonna have to be, okay. F3 is your skills, F4 is your perks. So we'll start with our skill trees, uh, and then we'll move to the perk trees. I'm gonna go over a rundown of each tree uh, just kind of a general overview of what they're for, what you can use them for. Uh, and then I'll go into detail of each tier and all of the skills and perks in those tiers. Uh, before we start, a couple things to note. There are two types of skills. There's passive and there's active. For example, locate tracks here is a passive skill. You can see by it says passive skill. Also, it has a black background to the icon. What this means is that it's always on. You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to turn it on. You don't have to activate it. You don't have to use it in any way, shape, or form. It just is always on. It's always applying its effects to you no matter what you do. So that's kind of nice. The majority of the skills and perks that you're going to put points into are going to be of this nature. Which is nice because it means that you don't have to constantly fumble around with turning things on and off. The other type is what's known as a active point um, or an active skill or active perk. These are going to be denoted by it saying active skill and having a green background. Now these are ones that you have to activate in order to use. You activate it by clicking on it and it's going to say activate. All you got to do, click on activate and you're ready to go. Um, it'll denote that by having a green border as opposed to a white border. Now when you activate a skill it's going to show up in the bottom right next to your PDA around the rest of your UI. Uh, if you have not watched Hunter 101 Episode 1, which goes over the UI basics, do so now. That will show you how everything works in your UI, and it will mention that. You'll notice that that icon is down there with the letter F on it. That is how you activate it. So certain activated points or activated skills and perks um, are toggled on and off. Others can be turned on for a short period of time and then have a cooldown, and then yet others are just toggling between some, uh, several settings. So, for example, the zeroing perk, which is what I have turned on right now. If I bring up a rifle, you'll see it says 150 meters. So we're going to go into how exactly that works, but as, if I, as I hit F, it's going to change to 75, hit it again, change to 300, again, back to 150. So that's all I'm doing is I'm toggling through the three by hitting F. Uh, other ones, again, like I said, you turn them on and off. Other ones, you activate them for a short period of time and then they have a cool down period before they can be used again. So that's the difference between passive and active. It is important to note if you make a mistake, you screw up, you put a point somewhere you didn't mean to, you misclicked, or you just you tried something out and it just didn't work for you, 
you can reset your points so that you can reallocate them as you see necessary. In order to do that, all you have to do is go into the tree where you want to reset the points, go up to reset skills, click on it. Uh, at this point, I don't have enough cash to reset my points, so I don't have the ability to actually do it, but it'll say, I think, cancel or accept. Um, it's because it's going to ask you if you want to spend the money. All you got to do is hit accept, and it's going to reset your skills. It's going to give them back to you, so you can put them out there however you want. The amount of money it costs to reset the points is going to be based on how many you have currently spent. So if you have, for example, I've got 14 in this tier, or in this tree. Um, so that's going to cost me $49,000, or whatever the, the currency is, credits. Um, Bucks. <laughs> oh, I'll be here all week. Anyway, um, moving on from that joke because nobody laughed at it because it wasn't funny. Um, so if you make a mistake like in the beginning, in the first tier or two, don't wait to correct it because it's just going to cost you much more money later on um, just to correct that one point that you may have screwed up back when you were level four or whatever so spend the money yeah it seems like a lot of money i think the cost could be tweaked a little bit i think it could use a little bit of a tweak um it is what it is for right now though they might change in the future they may not who knows uh we don't currently know how things are going to go if they ever raise the level cap past 60 if it's going to be every three levels or if they're going to increase it to every five ten whatever it is i do know they don't want people to be super hunters they don't want you to be able to fill out all of the stalker tree and then go and fill out all the ambusher tree. And I can understand that. I can agree with that. They want you to specialize. Uh, they want you to be good at one specific type of thing. Unfortunately, there's some skills and perks in the different trees that all work well together. So you kind of have to spread yourself out, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, my personal opinion is I don't feel that the skill in perk system is working to its full efficiency. I think there's plenty of skills and perks that are terrible, um, that aren't worth the point, that could be replaced with something better. I think things could be moved around a little bit. Um, I'm not really sure that this allows for a lot of flexibility and expandability down the road when they decide to up the level cap it. There's a huge discussion that can be had over the skill and perk system um, and how it could be changed, how it could be fixed, how it could be updated. Um, I'm not going to get into that in this video. I might make a few comments here and there in terms of um, what things I think are worth it and what aren't, but for the most part, that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, you guys can certainly discuss that in the comments if you'd like, um, but otherwise, I think it'd be a good thing to bring up in the Steam forum for the game, um, because I think it really does require a little bit more looking into to make it more efficient and make it work um, to the extent that it possibly can. That all being said, um, my only other little problem with the trees is that they give you so many uh, active skills. So there's three here, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's it. So there's nine total. Um, obviously, you're not going to have all nine because you can't put points in everything. But it's not out of the question for you to have maybe three or four currently for in order for you to use them active skills can only be activated one at a time so i can't have zeroing and then also weather prediction turned on at the same time game just doesn't allow you to do it um so what it happens up happening is so oh there's a deer up here i want to shoot it uh i set my zero to 150 and then i have to go in i have to click on this and i have to activate it in order to use it kind of a pain in the butt what i'd like to see um is if you press a hot button or a hot key it'll pop up a rotary wheel and you can kind of pick and choose the skills that you want to activate at that given time um just kind of on the fly i don't know if they'll ever add it it'd be a nice little touch um but until then like i said you have to open up the menu go in activate the specific one get out hope the deer hasn't spotted you and run away yeah, so um, that's my biggest gripe with this, other than some skills aren't optimal, but you know, not everything's going to be 100% optimal. Um, also, oh, you, might, you may or may not notice, uh, the game looks so pretty. All the colors pop, it's nice and crisp. 
Uh, I installed Reshade, and if you've got a good computer, definitely try it out. You can tweak it however you want to make it look however you want. Uh, I think it makes the game look really, really nice. I think it makes it look really crisp. Um, it's weird going from this back to the stock. Um, is just weird. Like it makes everything look washed out. It just and the nice thing is you can kind of turn things off on the fly if you want to, which is kind of nice. It's great for if you're doing videos and everything too, but uh, we're not going to get too far into that. We're actually going to be talking about the topic at hand for the video. So going into the first skill tree, Stalker. Stalker is going to be for tracking animals. It's going to be for hiding. It's going to be for setting up ambushes. Um, it's going to make you less visible to animals, make you make less noise. You're going to be able to glean more information from tracks and from sighting animals. Um, it's basically to enhance your skills as a stalking hunter. Not necessarily a hunter that sits in one place and draws animals in with calls and lures, but somebody who's going to walk around, they're going to hear an animal or they're going to see tracks, and they're going to track that animal down and kill it. Um, I'm of the mind that you really should put the bulk of your points into stalker especially when you first start out reason being that the ambusher tree which is not necessarily a bad tree it has some really good skills in it um, doesn't become relevant until like level 10 to 15 because the very first tier um, is affects only scent lures which is irrelevant at lower levels because you haven't unlocked them yet which i think is kind of bohunk um, I'm not going to get into that. We'll, we'll talk about that at a later date, I'm sure. So I would recommend when you're first starting out, dump all your skill points into Stalker. You'll get more immediate benefits out of it. You're going to get more bang for your buck right off the bat rather than having to dump points into it and bank them until later when you can actually start to see some use out of them. So Tier 0, Tier 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the, the five tiers. In order to unlock the skills for use in Tier 1, you need to put three points into tier zero. In order to unlock tier two, you need to have five points total in either tier zero, one. Any mix up of these four here, as long as it's a total of five, you can unlock these. You'll need seven total to unlock tier three. Um, wait, let me see. So tier one, tier two is five. So. I can't remember, you know, honestly. I, I think it's 3, 5, 9, 13. Maybe that's what it is. This is already open, so it's 3, 5, 9, 13. So you need three total. So as long as you pump up all three in this one, you'll unlock this. Um, add two more, five, nine total among all these. You can do three, and then 13 total, and you can unlock four. Um, so we're going to start with Tier 0, work our way up. I'm going to explain what each one does, what my thoughts are on it. I'm going to preface everything I'm going to say, though, with use what you like. N nothing I'm going to say here in this video is set in stone. Um, nothing I say is going to mean that if you take anything else, you're not going to be able to um, hunt efficiently. So you use what is most comfortable for you. If you find that you get a better use out of a skill then I might, by all means, use it. Um, if you don't like ones that I pick or that I've told you work well, hey, don't use them. You do you, boo-boo. Whatever works for you, whatever makes your hunt better. So let's get started. Um, so Tier 0, first one is Locate Tracks. You're going to have to put three points into this to unlock Tier 1 anyway, so definitely put the, the points into it. Um, level 1, the directional tracking cone becomes more accurate and narrower, both in the world and on the map. When you inspect a track, it's going to put that cone down on the ground, and that's going to tell you roughly what direction the animal went in. Now, without any points in this, that cone is really wide. So the further you get from, away from the point where you inspected the track, you get an exponential increase in the amount of area you have to cover to potentially find the next track. This is going to narrow it down to make it a little bit more accurate to shrink the amount of space you have to search um, so that you don't have to go looking over hill and dale for the next track. So definitely good. Level two increases the distance at which tracks are visible and highlighted. Um, it's useful. It's not as useful as you might think it is. Uh, 1.8 introduced um, 
either on purpose or by accident, nobody's really sure, it's made the tracks super bright, like supernova bright. So seeing the next tracks is not that big of a deal as long as you've got two eyes in your head, uh, as long as you're not colorblind, because there's no way to change the color of the tracks, and if you are colorblind, certain colorblind folks cannot see them, which kind of sucks. I'm sorry for that, guys. I kind of hope that they'll add a colorblind mode at some point, um, so you guys can hunt along with the rest of us. Anyway, level 2 increases the distance at which tracks are visible and highlighted. Great. Level 3. Level All level 3 does is it takes level 1 and level 2 and amp them up a little bit. So the, tra uh, the tracking cone is even narrower, and tracks can be seen from further away. So if you're putting points in the stalker tree, you're going to put 3 into that naturally to get to tier 1. Bingo, bango, bongo. Go on on to tier 1, the first one. Track knowledge, definitely a good skill. Um, definitely two points at least. Three would be good. Uh, and you'll see when we get to the next two skills in this tier why I recommend three. Uh, level one reveals information about an animal's gender when investigating footprints and vocalizations. Excellent. Good thing, because if you are tracking an animal by its tracks, you want to know whether you're after a big trophy or whether you're after a doe. Um, it may not be nearly as useful for you in the beginning because, honestly, you're going to take whatever walks across your path just to get the experience and the cash. Uh, but later on down the line, does, like I don't really shoot does anymore. I'm level 38. I mean, I don't really shoot does. I go after the big trophies just because it's more of a challenge for me. Does are a dime and a dozen. I can shoot a, a handful of those in five minutes, or I can take the time and go shoot a big trophy and actually like feel accomplished from it. Um, but it's nice to be able to, when investigating footprints and vocalizations, tell whether it's a male or a female. Level 2. Reveals information about approximate animal group size when investigating need zone tracks and an animal's approximate health when investigating blood trails. Now, the first half of this is somewhat useful. If you're somebody who hunts need zones a lot, I'm not. Um, it's nice to know how many animals are going to be coming into it. Number one, so you know, okay, there's the one deer. If I shoot it, now the need zone's gone. Um, or if you know that the thing has three to four, you see, say, three does come out of the trees, you know to wait because there's going to be a fourth animal coming along, and there's a very good chance it's going to be a male. could be a big trophy. So it's good to know that information just so you can kind of plan ahead. The second half of this is where it, what makes this skill really, really useful. Um, reveals information about an animal's approximate health when investigating blood trails. So when you investigate a blood trail from an animal you just shot, it's going to tell you in the little tool tip that pops up that that animal is at 75 to 100 percent health. 50 to 75, 25 to 50, 0 to 25. Those are the four ranges it's going to give you. This is nice because it kind of lets you know A, how well you hit it, B, where the animal is going to be dropping because you know that if two uh, blood spots into it you're down to zero to 25 percent health you're going to find that animal pretty soon so it's going to let you know to keep your eyes open uh, definitely worth putting at least those two points into this uh, they're going to help out immensely level three reveals information about an animal's approximate weight when investigating footprints and fur type when investigating disturbed vegetation it's handy to have this third point in a way. Um, the first half of it just kind of works as is. It's going to tell you approximately how heavy the animal is. Um, this can help because if you're tracking two animals, one is heavier than the other, you know that that one's going to give you a better score than the uh, lighter one. That's just the way it works. So it kind of helps you narrow down which one to go after. Um, fur type when investigating disturbed vegetation does not work unless you have disturbed vegetation in tier 4. We're going to get into whether I think this is worth it or not. Basically though, what's going to happen is when... Well, you know what, let's talk about it right now just because it kind of ties in with this one and I can't really explain level 3 without explaining this. Disturbed vegetation puts a new track type called disturbed vegetation down in between blood spots, animal tracks, droppings, whatever they're producing. Um, this kind of helps you really have a solid line of color to trail your animal. Um, there's, they, when they, I think it's 1.7, they screwed it up and there was tons of disturbed vegetation tracks. Like they were all over the place. They've dialed it back a bit. 
The only thing I don't like about them is they do look like some of the need zones, so you may or may not get them confused. Um, if you have level three of the track knowledge skill, it's going to say fur type when investigating disturbed vegetation. So when you investigate the disturbed vegetation, uh, it's going to give you the usual information about the animal, but it's also going to tell you what the fur type is. So common, albino, piebald, melanistic, um, red gold, black gold, uh, cinnamon gold, uh, cinnamon blonde, whatever the fur type is. That can be handy if you want to track down rare fur types. Honestly, you're probably going to be better served finding them just by glassing over an open area and finding a group of animals. So I would take three just for the first half of it and not necessarily the second half. If you take it for the second half, just know it's going to be a fair number of levels before you can even utilize it properly. So definitely worth putting at least two points into. Three would be good as well. I'm only happy when it rains. Level one decreases your visibility in foggy weather. Level two decreases your visibility in rainy weather. Now, this is worded a little weirdly, and it took me a while to catch on to it because I'm an idiot. Um, it says, I'm only happy when it rains, but it decreases your visibility in foggy weather. I took that to mean that you could see, you couldn't see as far in foggy weather. Or it was a typo, and you could actually see further in foggy weather because you're happy that it's raining. Um, but what I've taken it to actually mean, and what it actually means, is that your visibility to other things, to animals, decreases in foggy and rainy weather based on how many points you put into it. This could be useful. Uh, you could put an extra point into this if you really wanted to. You could even do two points, to be truthful, if you had an extra skill point floating around. Um, because I don't know if you've noticed that it rains like crazy in the two reserves. Um, Hirschfeld, it rains every 10 seconds. Um, Leighton, it rains a lot, but then again, it's the Pacific Northwest, so I'd kind of expect that. So I would consider this a decent skill, definitely better than when I first started the game, just because I misunderstood how it worked because it's worded weirdly. Um, as usual, there's information they don't really give you. They don't give you a pretty clear explanation of you know what stuff does. Uh, definitely a viable contender for this if you want to put points into it. Um, especially since at the beginning of the game you're going to be less, uh, more visible to animals because you aren't going to have other skills that will help drop it. So it is a viable contender to track knowledge in terms of vying for your points. Use common sense. If you find that you'll get more, inf more use out of this, use it. More use out of this, use this. Um, you use whatever you feel most comfortable with. I'm more comfortable with this, but I could see myself using this as well. Third skill is hardened. Exploring in the wild has made you a survivor, gain a 15% increase in health. Now, there's only a couple ways for you to get hurt in this game. You can get attacked by a bear that you've just shot. You can get run over by a moose or an elk. Or you can be like me and fall off of a watchtower. Because you saw that the railing was broken and your brain said, I wonder if I can walk through that and walk through it and fall to your death yeah so the less we talk about that the better so honestly i don't see much of a use for this yeah it gives you 15 percent increase to health the only thing that's going to kill you in one shot in this game would be falling from a tower and i don't even think that this would affect that at all i think you'd still die um the ai for the bears attacking you in this game is horrible they'll run up and stop run up and stop. They'll never actually attack you unless you, like, run into them. If you're backpedaling, that bear is never going to hurt you. Um, if you get run over by a moose or an elk, it's certainly possible if you spook a herd of elk, they're going to run you over. Um, you're not going to get killed by getting run over by one. So I don't feel that this is really worth the point. Um, if you find yourself in situations where you take damage a lot, it could be useful, but... For the most part, I don't think it's worth it. This is one of the ones that I think probably should go home and have something take its place. But, again, that's that's something to be saved for the discussion on the forum. Tier 2, first one, connect the dots. Um, if you use your hunter mate to track animals, this is very handy for you. 
I do, so that's why I have a point in that. Each time a track is investigated, a trail line is automatically drawn on your hunter mate between tracks of the active trail. The trail direction is also indicated with an arrow. Investigated tracks that were not dropped in consecutive order have a dotted line drawn between them to indicate that there are more tracks to be found to complete the trail. The dotted line will not occur if three tracks in the order are skipped. So this kind of gives you trace on the hunter mate exactly where the animal is going uh, or what direction it's been in kind of help you guess you know where it's headed this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use this for when you're tracking an animal you've shot you could very well use this for an animal that um you're trailing to find and shoot so it could be showing you it's going down towards the water it's going up into the mountains it's going here it's going there it could be going towards the need zone that you found previously so it's pretty handy to have a point in this and really it's just one point what are you going to do with a point now you're not, not going to put it into this i'll tell you that um, so definitely worth a point to be put into this if you use your hunter mate. If you don't use your hunter mate, put that extra point here. There you go. Um, next one is soft feet. This is one of those ones that I consider crucial to have. Again, take that with a grain of salt. You can not use it if you don't like and probably be pretty successful without it. Uh, level 1 reduces the noise generated when moving through foliage, such as grass and leaves. Level 2 reduces the noise generated when moving through larger vegetation, such as bushes and shrubs. You make a god-awful amount of noise when you're going through grass and leaves and when you're going through bushes and shrubs. So these two points are well worth it. My hunting style is I will walk around until I hear an animal call. When I hear that animal call, I will immediately move into the nearest bush, hunker down so that I'm less visible, call it in, shoot it. Now, obviously, this doesn't work for trophies. but um, So having decreased noise that the animal doesn't hear me is very handy in addition this actually works out really well for trophies too simply because they're going to have heightened senses they're going to hear you from further away they're going to see you from further away so anything you can do to decrease your visibility and the amount of noise you make always a good thing so definitely worth the two points to put into this Last one in this tier is weather prediction, our first active skill. Extensive studies in the art of meteorology has unlocked the ability to make accurate predictions about local weather conditions. Level 1 unlocks the ability to approximate when the weather will change and to what state, for example, when it goes from clear to rainy. Level 2 further extends the ability to predict weather changes in the future. I don't like this skill. I think it's useless. Um, if you want to tell that the weather is about to change, pay attention. Because the game gives you very obvious visual cues that the weather is about to change. If it's going to go from sunny to rainy, it's going to get cloudy. It's going to get overcast. If you look up, there's going to be nasty dark clouds above you. Guess what? It's about to rain. Um, also, if you want to know when it's going to clear up, just listen. The rain will stop. Uh, so I don't find that this is particularly useful. It might be handy for when there's going to be increased um wind simply because it, wind will help mask your movement noise but i don't know i don't really find this that useful especially since it's an active skill so it has to be turned on and then it has to be used uh, i've never really used it so i don't know how much of a cooldown it has on it um but i don't really think it's worth even the one point to put into it that's a point you could put somewhere else that would be better served Definitely another one that needs either some tweaking or to go away. Tier 3. Innate triangulation. Each level decreases the size of the animal vocalization indicator in the world, making it easier to pinpoint the position of the animal that produced the call. So when an animal calls, it will put up an icon on your screen. You can turn to it, inspect it, that'll tell you what the animal is, and if you're using the track knowledge skill, it'll tell you um, what... Uh, sex the animal is so you're gonna oftentimes find too if you turn and look in that area and you can see the animal it may be nowhere near the center of that icon this helps narrow it down so that if you see that icon you know the animal is pretty darn close to it um, it has two levels so you know the level two is going to obviously do that more than level one uh, i don't really know is it it's worth putting the second point into it but I didn't really have another place to put it. So um, if I was going to reset this, I would probably put that point into maybe this right here. Um, 
otherwise, you know, I mean, two points is fine. It'll help you track down animals a little bit easier. Improvised blind. Further decreases your visibility when inside large bushes and shrubs. This goes hand in hand with soft feet. So you're going to shove yourself into the nearest bush, which is going to make less noise and make you less visible when you're inside it. Honestly, if you're inside a large bush or a shrub, that will hide you better than the actual blinds do. Both the DLC blinds and the in-game blinds. So I don't know why you would ever use them, if I'm honest. Um, it makes you almost invisible. When you're right up against the trunk of it and you crouch down, your visibility will be at the lowest level possible. Animals will still be able to see you, but they're basically going to have to walk into the bush to see you. So, um, it's definitely worth putting a point into this. This is another one of those ones that I feel is absolutely necessary. Sure, you can hunt without it, it based on your hunting style. If you're not the kind of person that hides in a bush and calls animals to you like me, you might not need it. So don't bother putting a point into it. Endurance. All that walking has to be good for something, right? Increase your endurance so that your heart rate rises slower when moving and falls faster when idle. This is another really, really handy skill to have. So if you are running from one spot to the next, your heart rate will rise. If you are holding your breath while aiming down the sights, your heart rate will rise, especially when you let go of your breath. Higher heart rate increases your scope sway, or your aim sway, makes it harder to hit the animal, makes it harder to draw a bead on them. So finding a way that increases the amount of time it takes for your heart rate to rise and decreases the amount of time it takes for it to go down to the base level is excellent, especially considering that it does that with one point. I mean, that's, that's efficiency right there. Definitely worth putting that one point into it, no matter your hunting style. Uh, this is one of the best ones, in my opinion, in the entire tree. These three here are the best, in my opinion. But, again, that's just my opinion. So moving into the last tier, Tier 4, Disturbed Vegetation. We already went over this. Um, it's just going to put Disturbed Vegetation tracks down, make it easier for you to follow animals. If you combine it with the third level of track knowledge, it's going to leave little tufts of hair on it that will tell you what kind of fur the animal has. Wind Prediction. Uh, this is going to be our second of third active skills in the Stalker Tree. Level 1 unlocks the ability to detect when the general wind speed is about to increase by observing how it rolls in over the landscape. Ambient wind noise masks your movement noise, allowing you to move more quietly. Level 2 unlocks the ability to approximate a general wind direction and when it will change. This could be handy uh, if you are stalking big trophies simply because, like I said before, they're going to have heightened senses of hearing and smell and sight. So if you can mask your movement noise by timing it with the wind then that just kind of gives you an edge. Unfortunately, it is, again, an active skill, so you are going to have to swap out this for, say, zeroing if you are using that or, you know, any other ones that you happen to use. But overall, could be nice to put the two points into it as you level up. Um, as I get more information on it and try it out more, I'll be able to tell you with more certainty whether it's worth it or not. As far as regular animals are concerned, non-trophies, like level 3 and below, eh, probably not worth the two points. But the moment you start getting into the big guys, I think it's probably going to really pull ahead and shine. Uh, I would certainly take a point out of disturbed vegetation and put it into that. I don't find that disturbed vegetation helps me all that much. Since tracks are so easy to, be, to see from a distance, A, from the increased glow, and then B, from having points and locate tracks that having disturbed vegetation is just not worth it it just clutters everything up and then the last one in this tier and the last active skill for the stalker tree is called startle call unlocks the ability to stop animals in their tracks for a short time by making an unexpected noise perfect for when you're ready to take your shot after a short duration the animal realizes something's wrong and flee the more difficult the animal the faster is realization so if you've ever done hunting in real life yourself or if you've watched videos of other people hunting um, a lot of times with deer for example uh, when they want to stop the animal broadside they'll grunt or they'll whistle or they'll make something that a noise that will catch the animal's attention the animal will stop and look up and look around and it just presents itself for just a moment just long enough for you to take that perfect shot without the animal moving 
Uh, the higher the level of the animal, obviously the quicker it's going to know that something's awry and it's going to take off. Any level of animal will take off the moment they realize that something is up. It's just the level of the animal is going to dictate how long you have before that happens. Um, this could be actually be a really good active skill uh, just simply because of the fact that it lets you line up a perfect shot on your terms <clears throat> instead of waiting for the animal to stop on its own. So this might be worth a point, might be worth playing around. Um, if I ended up taking the point out of this, actually, I kind of wanted to put it in the startle call um, just to test it out, see how well it works. I figured I'd probably get more use out of that than disturb vegetation. So that, my friends, is the stalker tree. And this video has started to go on longer than I expected to. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to break it up into multiple parts. Um, this is going to be part A, stalker tree. Part B is going to be the ambusher tree. This is going to be an interesting video because I have a lot to say about this tree. Um, and then part C, we may be able to go over all of the perks in one video just because there's not very many in each tree. Um, so I think that's what we may end up doing is do one, two, three. Um, yeah, I think that'll work out quite nicely. That way you don't have to slog through an, an hour-long video just to get the information you want. You can kind of pick and choose. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, look out for the next sub-episode, I guess you could say, where we're going to be going over the ambusher tree. We're going to do the same thing we did with Stalker, where we're going to go through different tiers. We're going to explain what every single skill does, how I think it works, what I think it's worth it, etc., etc. Uh, if you guys like the video, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, thumbs it down, comment, let me know what you didn't like. I like all feedback because it tells me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.